Okay. <clears throat> Good to see y'all this morning. Um, hope everybody's doing doing well in our Sunday school class and all our Sunday school classes here at Pleasant Valley. Um, <clears throat> we know these have been some tough times that we're going through, but the Lord's going to see us through it. We just got to trust Him. Um, <clears throat> title of our lesson this week is love, talking about love. In John chapter 15, verses 9 through 14, it, uh, <clears throat> and there's other verses there too around that that we're going to talk about, but, you know, love, it, the point is, is that we need to let love permeate every relationship that we're in, you know, and I've, I've heard it said, and I've probably said it myself, and you may have said it too, that, you know, um, we have to love him or her, but we don't like them. I've always liked to think about it, and I think the way God thinks about it too is that, you know, he loves every one of us, no doubt about that. Uh, if he didn't, he wouldn't have done what all he's done to, to get us to where we're at. But <clears throat> he loves us, each one of us, but he doesn't like what we do. You know, as I think about that too, there was times that <clears throat> Jesus um, talking about things and, and these stories that God has left us in, uh, in the Bible that uh, he got angry, but it says he was angry and sinned not about the things that was going on. And somehow or another, we need to do that too. And, and I know in and of ourselves, we can't do it. It's not in us to do that. But with his help, the Holy Spirit's help, we can do it. You know, it's, it's, it's all about our attitude, too. Um, it's like we have to, the Bible says we have to love each other, but uh, we really don't want to in those situations like that. But we have to want to. You know, Jesus was real, and all that he talked about um, through the Scripture, and uh, we have to be real, too. We have to be ourselves and let him use us um, to be able to speak into these situations and I know that's hard that's easier said than done but we just got to trust him and, 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 and let him help us through all of this and this scripture this morning is so good about showing us um, how we can do that it's really interesting um, this, this really makes me think back to as a, when I was a young believer and all the had a lot more questions about stuff and I had answers but as time went on and God showed me things there was one of these verses here this morning in this that I've run across that really brought back a lot of memories and I'll talk a little bit about that directly but uh, <clears throat> you know we're in chapter 15 here and our verses our key verses is 9 through 14 but if you look back um, at verses 1 through 8 it kind of tells us it, it explains to us you know how that love works I'm going to just read those two and, and probably comment along the way and, and talk about it a little bit. But he says, now this is Jesus talking, speaking to his disciples. And uh, so these words carry a lot of weight. Uh, in my Bible, they're written in red. But he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser or the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit. Here's a, a, a verse that's kind of stuck in there that I don't know. I think there's some special meaning to it, but let me read it and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Verse 3 says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Um, you know, that word, it seems like this is a little bit out of place, but he's talking about that, that purge in there. Um, but, but that, uh, you know, he says, Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken. Wow. It's so important that we, that we read and try to understand with the Holy Spirit's help what God is telling us, what Jesus is telling us. But he goes on and says, Abide in me, verse 4, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, 
the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and it is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. In this is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Thinking about that being that branch, and, and us as Gentiles, or if I'm understanding it right, or, or adopted into that family of God, and that's so important. You know, God is all about family. Um, I've heard it said and believe it, this Bible that, that we read, you know, is His love letter to us. But thinking about that branch, and, and uh, if we're not connected to that vine, we're not going to be able to produce, produce anything. What happens in your garden or in a field where a, a, a plant is broken off or disconnected from that main root? It won't survive. It'll die. Now, there's some things that will root back out, but that ain't what he's talking about here. We have got to be connected <coughs> to Christ, to that vine, to be able to survive and, and to weather these storms and to get through what all we have to get through. Uh, <coughs> Abide, verse 4. We can do nothing without Him. Just what I'm talking about there. We've got to be connected to that vine. And, and, and we have to trust Him to help us to do that. And again, verse 3. His Word cleans us up. That's amazing, isn't it? You know, that blood through the blood of Christ uh, and Him shedding that blood on the cross for us, uh, for each one of us that, that accept Him, accept and believe that. Um, <clears throat> that's just amazing. It cleans us up. His Word does. And that's why it's so important to uh, study and, and again to help Him to, to have that Holy Spirit to help us understand what He wants us to understand. Um, <clears throat> verse 8 talks about God the Father is glorified because of the fruit, the much fruit that we'll bear. You know, and it talks about there in verse 2, I believe it is, where he purges it. You know, uh, um, <clears throat> a lot of fruit trees have to be pruned, prune that old dead dead uh, stuff off, and, and it'll help it to grow and produce more. And that's the same way in our lives as we uh, are, are abiding in that vine, and as he prunes us, as he gets those things out of our life that we don't need, that's no good to us, that's going to weight us down. We can do more for God, and that's... <laughs> That's important when you look at it and think about it. Um, <clears throat> in this is God glorified because of the fruit, the much fruit that we bear. <clears throat> think about John 3.16 again. Let me just read that to us right here back a few verses or a few chapters. Um, it says... That, and we all know this. I, you know, this is a lot of us know what I'm talking about here this morning. And uh, but it helps us to repeat it. It's worth being repeated, isn't it? <clears throat> For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's that promise that that God has given to us that uh, if we accept that gift that He's given us through Christ. Uh, he promises us that eternal life. <clears throat> we can hang on to that. We can trust that. It's, it's a done deal. Uh, nothing can take that away from us. Uh, God's not no Indian giver. He's not going to give us something and take it back. I don't believe it. Uh, it's there. Thank you, Lord, for that. <clears throat> Starting in verse 9 now, uh, I'm going to read verse 9 down through verse uh, 11. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. And even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that, your, that, that my joy might, be, might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. You know, talking about love, I can remember thinking back as a uh, uh, even a child and a young teenager and 
uh, growing up and, and getting married and um, you know I thought I knew what love was all about but I did not really have a clue that agape love that it's talking about here this morning <coughs> is a love that uh, that we just really don't understand as humans um, um, I can remember early on um, you know our wives like to hear us tell them that we love them I can remember telling mine early on you know I you know I love you I don't have to keep telling you that um, if, if something happens I'll tell you but God showed me real quick like as I got in his word and got to study and it's important he likes to hear it you know he knows what we're thinking he knows everything about us he knows whether we love him or not but he still likes to hear us say I love you and I got to thinking well surely if God likes to hear it our wives like to hear it too so <clears throat> Jesus said the Father has loved him, so he loved us. Continue in my love. <clears throat> and again, in and of ourselves, we can't do it. We can't love like that, the way God wants us to love. But if we abide in him, like verse 10 talks about, we have to obey him and ab abide. Um, let me read that again. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. So the way to do that, again, is being attached to that mind and growing and abiding in that love and, and doing what he tells us to do. Uh, that love will abide in us through that Holy Spirit. And at this time, the Holy Spirit hadn't come, but Jesus is talking about that in some of these other verses. And, and But that's really what he's talking about here. We've got to trust that Holy Spirit that lives within us as believers. Uh, to, to help us to be able to love like that because really without it we can't um, but as Jesus said the father has loved him so he loved us continue in my love and that's for each other uh, I guess that's where we get you know that the Bible can't command us we have to love and, and we do but it's not something that, that um, we have to do it's something we want to do because of what God has done for us <coughs> There's a verse in um, John 16, 27, I'm going to read, that kind of ties into this. It kind of jumped out at me. And uh, it says, uh, John 16, 27, says, For the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that came out from God. In other words, believe that, that he came from God. So... You know, that's that's a part of that. The the first step in salvation is realizing that you're lost, that you need Him. You know, we're in the need of that Savior. We come into this world uh, in this fallen state, and um, nothing we've done. It was done back in the Garden of Eden uh, years and years ago, that, that curse that was up upon all man because of that. So we're born into that, so we have to come out of that and, and believe and accept that gift of, of Jesus that he's given to us. Um, verse 11 talks about, says, These things have I spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Boy, that's a, when you think about that, <coughs> that's just a, a, a peace that passes all understanding. Because if, if we didn't understand that, you know, we could really lose track of all that's going on because uh, even as bad as things are, uh, even before this episode of this thing the last month or so that's been going on, this virus, you know, the world is in a mess. Had it not been for me understanding that God is in control, I'd really be worried, and I am concerned now, but He's in control. Uh, we got to trust Him. He'll get us through all of this. Um, Jesus' joy he leaves with us. It's running over. It's full. Um, you know, what comfort we can draw from him as he speaks to us. Remember when we as a believer, a child of God, the Holy Spirit living within us, teaching us and showing us how to love. What a joy, full. 
You know, and, and, and this is that verse a while ago as I think about this that I was talking about early on. I run across this verse, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. But, but the question is that was in my mind then and even now, why are His words so important to us? Why is God's words so important to us? Um, in John 14, 26, just back over a couple of pages, He says, But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in My name, He shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. You know, I can remember thinking <clears throat> as a young believer and, and some of those things that I didn't have answers to that came later on, and I'm still having uh, questions answered even today, 30, 40 years, nearly later. Um, the Lord is still speaking to me. I don't believe He'll ever quit speaking to us until we draw that last breath, and then we're going to be with Him if you know it. So, but, but the reason His words are important is because when, when I look at that, and I know God can do anything, you know, he, he tells us He can. We know that He can. God created all of this that we see and the things we can't even see. But how can He bring something to my remembrance? I can remember thinking this. How can he bring something to my remembrance that I have not looked at, that I have not read? And when I read that and when I understood that, that was my reasoning for I had to read the whole Bible through. And um, I remember, I think I mentioned this last time, I know I have in Sunday school over the years, but the first book that I had to read was Revelation. I don't know why, but I did. The next four books was the four Gospels, and I think I started here in John because it's really about love and helping me to understand that. But then I went to the first and started in Genesis. It took me about three years to do it, and these things now that I can look back and I can't, you know, it, it's, it's Greek to me. I don't ever remember looking at it, but God can bring that back to my remembrance whenever He needs to because I've looked at it. So to me, that's why it's so important that we've got to, to, to study and to look over and over again. These stories never get old. They just get richer in Him speaking to us and telling us what we need to know. But that's that joy, I think, too, that Jesus is talking about here, that uh, it'll be running over. You know, He leaves His joy with us, that our joy might be, f be full. What a blessing. What a blessing. John. <coughs> John 15 verses 12, 13, and 14 says, This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, then a man lay down his life for his friends. If you are my friends, you ye are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You know, that commandment, uh, love as he is loved. And again, you know, we can't do it on our own. We've got to let the Holy Spirit help us. We only do that trusting him and allowing him, the Holy Spirit, um, to do that through us, abiding in that vine again. Um, verse 13 talks about that, that, that uh, greater love had no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. You know, he's calling them friends here, and I think he may even be referring to the cross here that he's fixing to have to go to shortly. Um, but he's, 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 you know, laying down his life for his friends. And I think even us, and I, I know thinking in my life, it would be hard for me to have to give up my son. It would be hard for me to have to lay down my life for someone else. I want to think that I could do that, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that's that love again that he's talking about. Greater love hath no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. <clears throat> Jesus was doing just that for us, for each one of us. 
verse 14, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. He calls us his friends, but we have to listen to him and do as he commands us. Commands us, you know, and that's uh, uh, listening to that word, reading that word that he's spoken to us. Then that word that cleanses us, as, as he mentioned back in verse three. Uh, let me read that again. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. I'm um, I'm missing it in my notes here, but somewhere or another in First John, and I can't help but think about that as I think about love. I think it's First John chapter four, and I may read all of this because it really talks about a lot of what we're talking about here. Um, it starts out in verse one, Belie beloved. Believe not every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are in, going out into the world today. Um, he's talking about today then, but think about today now. You can hear all kind of stuff out there, but if it doesn't line up with what the Word of God says, don't listen to it. And, and he tells us a way here to test the spirits. <laughs> And here's what he, he, the way he tells us to do this in verse 2. By this know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. In verse 3, every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, of which you have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. Ye are of God, little children. I like the way John talks about that. Calls us little children. Um, and you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak of, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And he that loveth not God, and he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifest that the love of God toward us that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him, hearing His love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Think about that. Not because we love God, but because He loved us first. If I would have been the only one on earth Jesus would have still come and died for me. When I think about that, all of those that we know that we have to love and may not like what they do, the worst of them, the worst of them, God loves them. <clears throat> Verse 11, Be loved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we... If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. By this know we that dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, believing in Him, accepting that gift. Verse 15, Whosoever confesseth that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath through us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath punishment 
or torment. <clears throat> he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man says, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment. Have we, and this commandment we have from him, that he who loved God love his brother also. So important that uh, talking about that love and how we're to love as God loved Jesus and how Jesus loved us and left that joy, His joy with us. Um, we we've got to abide. We've got to uh, allow Him to cleanse us uh, every day, purify us with His Word. And and again, the way we do that is study, and He'll show us uh, what we need to know. He'll cleanse us from. Uh, all the things that's going on in our life. You know, that, that old man that lives within us still keeps coming back every day. We have to struggle with that. But through the Holy Spirit living within us, if we allow Him, we can handle that. That's the only way we can, is that a way. The last uh, three verses I want to read in this chapter uh, kind of sums it all up as to what's going on with this love. Verse 15, 16, and 17 says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Think about that. He was teaching his disciples here. He, he was teaching throughout his lifetime, his ministry on earth. And even now through the Holy Spirit, um, whatever God has made known to him, he's made known to us if we'll just look. Um, he talks about there in the first part of that verse that a, a servant uh, does not know what his, um, his Lord doeth. We know what God is doing. We, because He's told us through His Word. Jesus has told us what He's doing. And, and even through all of that, it's still hard to understand, I know, but through the, the Spirit, we can understand that. He's not even, you know, what what's God has promised us, we can't even begin to really understand what it's going to be all about uh, when we leave this world, when we draw our last breath. If we're trusting in Him, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We'll, we'll go and our spirit will be right with Him. And that's just a blessing when you think about it. Having that, knowing that peace that God has taken care of us because of that love. <clears throat> Verse 16 says, you have, chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth uh, fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever ye shall ask of the Father in my name he may give it to you you know again <clears throat> he says you have not chose me I have chose you I think that's his perfect will or perfect that, that everyone would be saved, but God knows that, that everyone's not. There are going to be some that will choose not to, to go their own way for whatever reason, and I don't understand that, but, but there will. But He chose us. He knows. Uh, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Um, <clears throat> and He says, Ordain, I have ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit. That you should, and that your fruit should m remain. That whatever you ask in the Father's name, in my name, He may give it to you. That's kind of <clears throat> hard to understand in a way too. But I think if we're abiding in that vine, if we're abiding in Jesus, and and He's instructing us and He's cleaning us, don't you think that we're probably not going to ask nothing that's not a part of God's will? We're going to be agreeing with God with whatever we ask. And it'll, it says that um, he may give it unto you. Um, special blessing there, thinking about that. Verse 17 then kind of sums it all up. These things I command you that you love one another. And again, <clears throat> 
that's the command that he's told us you know that we we're we're to love one another with that with that agape love that he has for us and and i know that's hard but we we've got to trust him uh because again we can't do it on our own we have to uh trust him to to live through us and to do that through us there's a lot of times and it amazes me even now you know <clears throat> with things going on when you try to comfort people and with with things going on in their life you'll say things that you won't remember even say it but you can rest assured god is giving that to you to say to them that's that spirit again that's living within us and showing us what we need to do and what we need to say and and um how that that blesses our life it, it fascinates me when i think about it you know if god can use me he can use anybody um again god is love and he loves each one of us <clears throat> I'll be glad when this is all over with, and I don't know, I, I've said when things get back to normal, uh, if there is such a thing as normal, at least to where we can get back to church and Sunday school and, and all God has created us. I think I mentioned this the other Sunday. Uh, God has created us as, as different beings, but yet we long that fellowship. That fellow, We need that fellowship. Uh, he didn't create us to live as a hermit out in the woods by ourselves. Some people might like that, and I enjoy being off to myself farming. Uh, a lot of days I don't see anybody but my wife, maybe. But uh, we still need that fellowship with each other, and I'll be glad when we can when we can come back together and do that. So until then, thank the Lord for this uh, uh, <clears throat> media that we've got that we can present this to you and I thank Brother David and Brother Sam for all they do and, and all the pastors that uh, that are doing this sounds like a lot of them are doing it um, can you imagine think about a pastor now all he's done all his life is preach and teach week in and week out and yet now for several weeks we haven't been able to get together I can imagine Brother David is probably ready to go as a lot of other pastors ready to get back and I am too, and I'm sure everybody else is. So, again, we just need to, to continue to trust God and uh, uh, know that He is in control, and, and uh, we're going to see better days. So thank you for tuning in and listening to this, and I pray that something I've said has been a blessing to you. Again, I pray that if I've said something out of the way that doesn't need to be heard, that you don't hear it. Um, God can do that too, and we thank Him for all of that. Uh, let us pray now. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you and we do love you. Lord, we, and you know our hearts. Lord, we know, uh, we know that you know all about us even better than ourselves. And Father, we just thank you for that love that you have for each one of us. Uh, here at Pleasant Valley and all the churches all around the world, Lord, we thank you for that great love that you had for us that, that allowed your son to go to that cross and to die <clears throat> for each one of us. And then, like I said earlier, if it was just me, he would have still done it. So thank you for that. Thank you, Christ, for doing that for us. Help us, Lord, to look at this lesson, look at this scripture, and help us every day to look at your word and to draw from it, draw strength from it, uh, how, how you can teach us and cleanse us uh, each and every day for that. Uh, Lord, we just, again, thank you for our church. Thank you for each and every member, and we pray that, pray that uh, a special blessing on them today, Lord, that you will just look down on us, and, and Lord, just draw us close to you as we draw close to you. And, Lord, we will thank you for all that you do. We want to remember now our country and our, our leaders, uh, uh, state leaders, county leaders, uh, with all that's going on, just give them that wisdom, Lord, that only you can give them. And trust, Lord, that they'll take it and, and use it, Lord. And uh, we know that they can make decisions they need to make, Lord, if they're depending on you to be able to, to do what's right. Lord, uh, uh, again, we just love you and ask you to go with us now. Lead us and guide us as only you can. For it's in Christ's precious name we pray. Amen.